number eight, we want to draw the curves and find the area between the curves and then decide whether we want to integrate with respect to x or to y. So let's draw this out. Um, for the first curve, this one over here, there are multiple ways to draw it out. Um, I will draw it by factoring, finding the roots, and then kind of fitting a curve through it. So I will factor this equation, x squared minus 2x is equal to 0. So then I have x times x minus 2 is equal to 0. Um, so my roots are at x equals 0 and x equals 2. So let's, let's draw this out. Um, so I have here 1, 2, So my roots are at 0 and at 2. Um, <clears throat> because the roots are symmetric with respect to the vertex, I do the know that the vertex it is at x equals 1. Um, so I just need to find the y value for it. So I'm going to plug it into the equation. So when I plug in 1, that's 1 squared minus 2 times 1. Um, and that gives us 1 minus 2 is equal to minus 1. So our vertex lies at, at 1 and minus 1. So we'll um, we'll draw this this out. Looks something like this. And this is our curve. Um, y is equal to x squared minus two x. So now we need to draw the other curve, and I'm just going to erase this so that we have enough space to work. Um, we do need to draw our other line, which is the line. Um, y is equal to x plus 4. So for, for this one, it's just a straight line. Um, I will have to scroll a little bit more to make my drawing bigger. And it does, the y-intercept is at 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Um, and the x-intercept is at minus 4. I did draw this kind of too small to fit, but that's that's okay. So it does go something like like this. And that in theory is a straight line. So we can clearly see that the um the area between them is this area over here. Now we have to ask ourselves whether it makes sense to integrate with respect to x and or with respect to y. Um, and remember that when we're integrating, we're really just summing up um, a bunch of rectangles, right? Infinitely thin rectangles, as we've seen with our Riemann sums. So does it make sense to have vertical rectangles, which is when we um, integrate with respect to x, or does it make sense to have horizontal rectangles, which is when we integrate with respect to y? Well, if we put horizontal rectangles, um, at some points, the upper and the lower boundaries will be defined by the red curve, right? And so, for example, um, over here, if I had drawn it like this, my upper boundary and my lower boundary is defined by the same curve. However, when I draw it up here, my upper boundary is described by the red curve and my lower boundary is described by the blue curve. So I will have to break it up into two integrals um, and that's more work than we need to do. So instead of doing that, we will draw um, we will draw vertical rectangles because when we draw vertical rectangles, we do have uh, the height, which will always be the blue line no matter where we're drawing. And the lower boundary will always be the red line. So we're almost ready to set up our integral, um, except we don't really know where the bounds of integration are. And to find the bounds, we do need to find where uh, these two curves intersect. So it's at um, this point over here and this other point. Um, and to find where they intersect, we basically need to set them equal to each other. So we have um, x plus 4 
is equal to x squared minus 2x. So I'm just going to bring um, everything to the right. So I have 0 is equal to x squared minus 2x minus x. That gives me minus 3x and then plus 4. Um, thankfully, this factors very easily because it factors into um, minus 4 and plus 1 because it multiplies to... Um, so that is not correct. I should have written that as minus 4, yeah. So it factors into minus 4 and 1 because it multiplies to minus 4 and it adds to negative 3. So we have um, x minus 4 times x plus 1. So our x's are at x is equal to negative 1 and x is equal to 4. So with this in mind, we are ready to, um, to build our integral. It is the integral from minus 1 to 4. And remember that when we're summing up, we're just summing up these rectangles. So we do um, the, the higher function minus the lower function. The higher function is x plus 4, and then minus x squared minus 2x, which is the lower function. And all of this times dx, because we can't forget that our, um, our rectangle does have a width dx. So now let's just clean this up uh, a little bit. So this is the integral from minus 1 to 4 of um, minus x squared. I always like to put it uh, in decreasing powers. Um, minus minus 2x is plus 2 plus x. So plus 3x and then plus 4. All this times dx. So now we just uh, we integrate it. It's very simple applying the reverse power rule. Um, this is minus x cubed over 3 plus 3x squared over 2 plus 4x from negative 1 to 4. So now all that's missing for us is to um, evaluate the boundaries, right? So we do have uh, minus 4 cubed over 3 plus 3 times 4 squared over 2 plus 4 times 4, um, and then it's minus, minus, and minus, so that becomes a minus uh, 1 cubed over 3, and then um, minus 3, 2 times 1 squared, and then the minus with the minus becomes a plus, so plus 4. Um, and now we just simplify this a little bit and then add everything up. So this is minus 64 over 3 um, plus this is 24 plus 16 and then that is um, minus 1 third minus 3 over 2 and then plus 4 which when I plug this into my calculator let's see what that gives me It gives me 125 over 6. Yes. So um, this is the answer to the area that's between these two curves, right? Which we have chosen to integrate it with respect to x because we want the um, vertical rectangles which are easier to integrate in this case.